Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. This morning we have um, a parable. This is normally titled, if you flip me through your Bible and you do like me when you're trying to find a scripture passage, I look for the titles first. It's usually titled, The Parable of the Rich Fool. And every time I read this, I'm not actually sure if that's an appropriate title because when I think about the rich man, he doesn't seem to me to be foolish at all. He's not described in any way of being wicked. He's described as being wealthy, but doesn't say that he got his wealth through deceit or through treachery or anything like that. He apparently has a really good harvest, which I think is a blessing. He can't be, he can't be a fool for being a good businessman, having a good harvest. And he seems like he's going to do something pretty sensible with that harvest. He's going to try to store it. Which I think if you and I were farmers and we had an abundant harvest, we wouldn't want all of that grain or corn to go to waste. We'd, we'd build a new bar, put a new silo up to make sure that we could store that grain, knowing that sometime down the road, the harvest might not be as good. So to me, he doesn't quite seem a fool for any sorts of those reasons. But he is a fool. He's not a fool because he's wealthy. He's not a fool because he wants to store his possessions. He's a fool for how he views his wealth and how he views his possessions. Did you notice when I was reading the gospel reading how many times the word I or my is used? What should I do with all my possessions and my barns and my goods and my soul? See, our rich man, he's, he's made an error. He's worshiping the God, the holy, un, the, the unholy trinity of me, myself, and I. Notice in the mention of his abundant harvest and all that he has that he never once mentions God. Never once says, hey God, thanks for the great harvest. He never once says, boy, I have a little extra now. Maybe... Maybe I should give that to my neighbor down the road whose harvest wasn't as good as mine. It's all about him, isn't it? All inward, all me, myself and I. And I think that stems for what is, is his true <coughs> foolish error. Is that he puts the security of his life in the, in the hands of possession. He takes something that's finite and tries to make it permanent. Look at what he says then. Saul, relax. You got all sorts of stuff around you. You can kick up your heels, eat, drink, be merry. He views his security in terms of the fact that he's surrounded by a lot of possessions, a lot of wealth, a lot of things. But that very night, his life is demanded of him. Will his possession save his life? I think we hear from Ecclesiastes that it won't. Will his possessions give him meaning of life? Will his possessions 
give him purpose? Will his possessions bring him joy? Maybe for a little while. See, that's why the rich man's a fool. It's because he puts his security, he puts the meaning of his life in something that could just as easily be taken away. One fire and all that store of grain is gone. And then, well, where will he be? We, all of us, if we look deep in our hearts, if we're honest with ourselves, often act like the rich fool in this story. We put our security in the midst of our possessions. We do that because we know that human life is fragile, isn't it? Human life is vulnerable. So often, especially in these last years, we are trying to just get by. And we want to feed our families, clothe our children. We want to have the comfort of life. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. This parable doesn't say that wealth is bad. By no means does it say that. But what it is saying to us is how do we view that wealth? How do we view those possessions? How do we view the things that we've been given by God? And there, my friends, is the rub. Given by God. It is God who has blessed the rich man's harvest. It is God who blesses us. It is God who gives us money and clothes and food and shelter and cabins and boats and golf clubs and trips to Disney World. It is God who gives us all those things. But how often do we acknowledge it? How often do we, in the midst of receiving all that we've received, just put our trust in those possessions because it makes us feel better? better? Because our security, my, my friends, doesn't come from the things that we have. It comes from faith and trust in the infinite God who loves us. See, in all of our possessions, as we all well know, can easily be taken away. Our life can change in an instant. And so our worth cannot come from those things that we own and buy and surround ourselves with. Our worth comes from knowing that we are a child of God, forgiven and redeemed by Jesus Christ. Our worth and our meaning comes from knowing that we share God's love with others. That we reach out to others in pain kindness and compassion and hospitality. Our purpose comes from knowing that we are here on this earth to give to others a piece of ourselves. And that doesn't need necessarily be a gift of money. It's a gift of love and of grace because we've been given that gift of love and grace by God. That's what it means when it says, store up for yourselves treasure in heaven. That treasure is faith. That treasure is grace. That treasure is love. That, that treasure is looking outside of ourselves for the sake of the other. So if we are blessed, if we feel that we are truly blessed, we must always remember that that blessing comes from God and that God loves us no matter if we have a lot of money or a little money. God will be there to provide for us a foundation of our life, to give us security and hope, knowing that we are saved and redeemed, and that nothing can take away that love, nothing can take away that grace and that mercy. So brothers and sisters, if you're putting your security, your comfort, the possessions that you own, take stock and stop and ask yourself where do I get meaning in my life? Is it from the thing that I bought at the store yesterday? Or is it from the God who has created, sustained, and saved me through his son Jesus Christ? Let Christ be your security, your rock, and your